coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky Fire Department is mourning the loss of a longtime employee. And the ARH Foundation continues to commit itself towards helping families who were hit by the July 2022 flood. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. We're coming up on 5.30 this Tuesday morning, and it's Tuesday, but it's not raining, or is it? Let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast. It is not, but we are dealing with the fog, Madison. It is 68 outside our door here this morning at WYMT. The visibility does run low in spots, so please take some extra time, especially as you make your way toward Harlan and Jonesville, where the visibility has been fluctuating around a mile or less in spots. Temperature-wise, upper 60s, lower 70s, minus Clintwood and Wise checking in at 63 and 64, respectively. It's been a couple of radar blips as you make your way toward La Follette this morning. Otherwise, we are dry. As we look back to the south and west, this flow of moisture will continue to track toward us which means, yes, more shower and thunder shower activity scattered about as we head through your Tuesday. Now, it's timed out to come in pretty much the second half of the day. And with some breaks of sunshine, we'll see a forecast high up close to 83. Any changes? Any sunshine, significant sunshine on the way? We'll let you know. Your first alert seven-day forecast that's coming up in just a few moments. Madison. All right, Tim, thank you. On Saturday, former Hazard Fire Department Deputy Chief Alvin Cottle Sr. died. Cottle served as Deputy Chief for 25 years. After retiring, he still felt the need to serve his community and started working for 911 dispatch in Hazard. He would be there for 10 years and would leave after becoming the executive director. Members of the community remember Cottle as a lover of people and Perry County. He was a servant to the people here in uh, Perry County and Hazard and he dedicated his entire life to, to service and, and serving others and uh, he was a great guy. We're going to uh, sorely and greatly miss him in this uh, community. Cottle was also known for working with heavy equipment. His funeral will be tomorrow at the Middle Fork Church of Christ at noon. A Madison County man is in the hospital after being seriously injured in a motorcycle crash. Kentucky State Police say the other driver was an officer under the influence. On Saturday, Preston Lambert and his friend were riding their motorcycles along Charlie Norris Road in Richmond when a UTV reportedly and abruptly pulled out in front of him. Preston says he did not have much time to break. He said that he just closed his eyes and was praying for the best, and he ended up flipping into the side-by-side. -side. The Madison County Sheriff's Office called in Kentucky State Police to investigate. According to troopers, the driver of the UTV was an off-duty Madison County Sheriff's deputy. Jonathan Thompson was arrested and charged with DUI and assault. One man is in jail after police say he reportedly choked a woman and forced her into a garage. Knox County deputies responded to a complaint that a woman had been assaulted Sunday night just before midnight. After arriving at the property, police told Craig Stone to stop what he was doing, but instead he ran inside the garage. Police later found Stone and the woman in the attic of the property. Stone was taken to the Knox County Detention Center. A Somerset man is behind bars after police call, were called to the scene about a man trying to hurt himself. Deputies with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office received that call just before 9 p.m. Sunday night. Police noticed drug paraphernalia and a substance believed to be meth after arriving at the home on Breezy Hills. After trying to give officers false information, 57-year-old Kyle Wright was arrested. He was taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. As we approach the two-year anniversary of the July 2022 flood, many communities are still rebuilding. WYMT's Caroline Mueller tells us what the ARH Foundation for the Healthier Communities is doing to help. Nearly two years later, 
Some in the community, along with organizations, are still feeling the effects of the July 2022 flood. It's so important for a lot of people outside of the area to know that we're not recovered from this yet and our communities won't be for a long time. Angela Bailey is the executive director for the ARH Foundation for Healthier Communities. She says to commemorate the anniversary, they are having a sports equipment drive for the schools that were impacted. Many of our schools lost everything right down to their last kickball, and we want to make sure that all of the children in ARH's communities have access to healthy and safe sports equipment. So that's what this sports drive is all about. People can make monetary donations or buy items from their Amazon wish list. She says it's about people doing whatever they can to give back. I need people to know that when they donate a dollar to the foundation, every penny of that dollar is going right back out into our communities. And so we are asking everyone and anyone to please help support us in this drive. She says she is proud of how ARH and all other nonprofits in the area have come together to serve the needs of citizens. I have worked with donors and different nonprofit organizations in my career all over the state and all over the country. And I can tell you that here in Eastern Kentucky, we take care of our own. Bailey says as long as there is a need, flood related or not, the foundation will be there for the people of Eastern Kentucky. Caroline Mueller, WYMT Mountain News. Bailey says they are working to find more ways people can volunteer with the foundation. We have the wish list and a link to donate in this story on our website. Apple Shop is also working to celebrate community and strength as we near the two year anniversary of the 2022 flood, bringing art and access to Jenkins. The organization planted its offices in Jenkins after the flood and is currently working on a project to reinvigorate the community. The NAARP grant was awarded to the group to improve the city's walkability with sidewalk repairs and new benches and to commission a new mural to mark the area's tenacity through tragedy. Our willingness to, to take what we have and, and work with what we've got and to just have an increase of pride in Jenkins. Work on the project will begin soon with the mural expected to be complete by the end of next month. The Kentucky Office of Highway Safety came to KSP Post 13 yesterday to announce the start of the Rural High Five Seatbelt Initiative here in Perry County. Since 2019, Perry County has seen a high number of unbelted fatalities and with the High Five program, the hope is those numbers will decrease. The initiative will focus on the enforcement and education of seatbelt usage with the goal of decreasing the amount of deadly crashes in Perry County. Perry County actually ranked number one per capita in the state of Kentucky for unbelted deaths. Now that's a number that we just can't have any part of and we don't want to be on top of that statistic. So uh, we've played, placed a lot of effort in trying to make sure that we get out here and educate the people why it's important. Bill Bell with the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety said Perry County will be the blueprint for other counties to follow. As students prepare to return to the classroom, school officials are preparing to assess kindergarten readiness. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares how it is measured and what is being done at the state level to for further support schools. Kindergarten readiness is tested at the beginning of each school year. However, it starts well before then programs like our early step program to you know talk with parents before they even go to preschool or before they go to kindergarten. Throughout the years, Roy G. Eversole Elementary School principal Derek Allen says they have been working to engage with students before kindergarten or even preschool. Well, the standards have changed a little bit and it's pretty strenuous. You know, there's a lot of information that a kindergarten student is expected to know. So we try to you know relay that to parents early and often. Not County Schools preschool director Kelly Hall says efforts made within the district has led to success. We've really started to address it and monitor it more closely, and we've seen some uh, tremendous gains in students that are kindergarten ready at this point. But we've also noticed that students that attend preschool uh, most of the time have better kindergarten readiness scores than students who have not attended preschool. House Bill 695 went into effect on July 15th. The bill is about establishing the Adaptive Kindergarten Readiness Pilot Project. Both Allen and Hall 
agree it will bring more resources and attention to schools throughout the Commonwealth. You know, that puts them on a fast track to be successful in their education. So I really like that the state, you know, is showing an interest and a commitment into doing that. Uh, and we're going to do our part here at school to make sure that students get what they need. Like we've already been doing that, but now we will get resources and guidance from the state that will help us achieve kindergarten readiness. We've been practicing kindergarten readiness for years. It's just going to maybe give us a more concrete path to get there. Saying it is best to have students prepared before walking through the doors on the first day of school. RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Children ages four and five will be eligible for the pilot program starting this upcoming school year. The Department of Education will provide preschool children with educational technology programs to improve kindergarten readiness. Officials with Hazard Independent Schools have turned an unused space into an area for classes. This outdoor space at Roy G. Eversole Elementary School was once just dirt. The space is now covered by colorful umbrellas. Principal Derek Allen says it is inspired by similar alleyways throughout the mountains. So we had an, an unused space here at our school that, you know, we were just really wanted to turn into something special that we could use in an instructional way and, you know, increase our school culture too. So we took a uh, vacant sort of alley between two buildings, which was a dirt path, and we turned it into what's called an umbrella alley. And it's an outdoor classroom setting uh, that I think our kids are going to love. We're really excited about it. Allen says switching up locations for students can be helpful, adding they hope the space makes a new creative workplace environment. 